enlighten us the legal aspects with respect to engineering field and now i uh, i feel it great to introduce my dear, own friend dear friend long uh, childhood friend advocate ritesh ji and would like to introduce him to the gathering ritesh ji is a practicing advocate in courts and tribunals of new delhi ncr and including honorable supreme court of india and high court of delhi and national company law tribunal as well as armed forces tribunal he has served in indian armed forces in technical stream as class 1 gazetted officer and fortunately he is also associate member of institute of engineers and who passed out in 2005 so it's a paradigm change for him from being defense services to engineer to advocate and ritesh is a senior practitioner in his law firm dhir and co which undertakes cases in all of haryana punjab rajasthan delhi and uttarakhand states he specializes in varied spectrum ranging from military court martials ccs disciplinary proceedings to insolvency and bankruptcy arbitration and cyber crimes ritesh is having masters degree in law with specialization in business law from kurukshetra oh, university has done certification in financial law from institution institute indian institute of corporate affairs and presently pursuing post graduate diploma in cyber forensics from national law university bangalore would like to mention advocate ritesh is on board of couple of companies as independent director also he loves to teach mathematics and physics to under privileged in his free time if at all he is having and he advises free of cost legal opinion to anyone who is in need and believes the right advice can save a person from unnecessary litigations with this i welcome advocate ritesh ji to commence the session thank you thank you uh, uh, thanks a lot uh, such for kind words uh, and and i will uh, start i would i would share the screen i'm sure that every one of you must have uh, seen this hindi movie uh, or heard about this dialogue uh, which states that uh, tarik par tarik there is a angry protagonist this gentleman i forgot his name some some deol uh, 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 abey i forgot deol sunny deol i'm not a movies man i don't watch a lot of movies but yeah this sunny deol is very angry and he gave a very iconic dialogue tarik par tarik that means uh, date and date and date this date and date continues in our uh, indian legal system unfortunately the legal system the indian legal system the courts are so burdened there are so many cases that any litigation at an average civil litigation uh, takes approximately 3 to 5 years that is the band minimum i mean 3 to 5 years any case will take civil litigation crime i'm not talking crime is little faster but uh, civil litigation takes so now what happens to curb this litigation in particularly contractual matters in agreements the parliament the government introduced arbitration and reconciliation act this is the alternate dispute remedies we can use like it is something called as a, in india it was it was in sages panchayat where five people sit together and resolve the disputes but it was not having a legal sanctity so government introduced uh, arbitration act an arbitration act was introduced to give such type of mediation a legal sanctity now what happens this act is very much very much relevant to engineering discipline how we will discuss in coming uh, my presentation this arbitration and conciliation act was uh, introduced in 1996 and it has brought a paradigm shift in litigation so now uh, 
allow me just a moment the topic of today is uh, arbitration laws and its relevance in sustainable engineering so how how arbitration can affect engineering discipline positively and in sustainable manner that means uh, this positive effect should continue it should not uh, stop it should it should give a uh, value addition so today with the topics we will cover what is the arbitration this is just a basic introduction what are the advantages and disadvantages of arbitration we will see what are the cases what are the matters which cannot be referred to arbitration what would be the recourse against arbitral awards for example the arbitration tribunal the arbitration arbitrator gave a award which we which i feel is not right is unjust so what i should do next is uh, it's today's topic it's uh, relevance in engineering and how a project manager can affect while offloading the work to subcontractors or to the contractors or in government tenders how this arbitration clause can be uh, in, uh, uh, can be incorporated and how it should be incorporated particularly to engineering matters now this is very important the reason is many a time many a time when i am offloading a work or when i am floating a tender i make a arbitration clause so shoddy that it goes against me so how it should be made particularly when the tenders or subcontracts or contracts are relating to a uh, technical matter next we will have a couple of uh, two three case studies that how arbitration has uh, been uh, employed in engineering matters then question answers so what is arbitration as it is it's a judicial process it is not a uh, it's a quasi judicial but no it's a proper judicial process which is having a coating of informal manner it is informal the way it should be done is decided by the parties who are parties to dispute so it's but it is fully judicial process a informal process but a judicial process here i would like to say that all the people in this audience that is you can be a judge in arbitration you all are specialist in your field so if there are two parties one is your contractor and one is your department if both of them are having certain type of dispute let it to be payment to specifications to uh, delays uh, to labor wages anything that can be educated by you 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 can be the judge that is the beauty of uh, arbitration just a moment and next the arbitrator that is you you would be enforcing your own point of view in the arbitration you how you feel it will be given and the award will be given but whatever the view which you will have the arbitrator will have will be given in form of award award is nothing it is similar to judgment in the legal way we call it judgment in arbitration we call it award now this award is binding on all the parties involved if i have a contractor whom i have given contract to install electric poles in my locality for example i have uh, i have made a township now township has 300 uh, uh, plots so the contractor has to install 500 electric poles in time bound manner now there is some dispute some dispute whatever to specifications or to time or to payment anything a dispute comes i appoint an arbitrator now that contractor also agrees to the arbitration arbitrator gives an award this award is binding on both of us it could be in my favor or it could be in favor of the arbitrator and this award completely rests on equity and justice equity means the common sense what the common sense is sometimes the judgments are given which are based on black and white law but equity is something what a common sense says what the compassion says so award is given based on equity as well as justice now this procedure this is a procedure legal procedure is suited for settlement of contractual rights now a contract is between for example nhi and nhi national highway authority of india 
and JP. For well, just for an example, JP infra. So the rights both parties will have. Both parties have agreed to certain conditions. So arbitration is best suited to uphold their rights. Now arbitration method is a way to solve a conflict by referring the conflict to a third party. Now third party could be a sole arbitrator, could be one person, could be three persons, could be five persons. It is like a typical panchayat. But the only difference is, only difference is that they are qualified subject matter expert. Now, now this dispute is submitted to third party. Now this third party or parties, that is the arbitration panel, they are impartial. They and the award which will they will give will be binding on both the parties. If there are both parties, if there are more than two parties, then the award will be binding on all the parties. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of referring any dispute to arbitration and not going through the normal legal process? One, first of all, and most important, the person or the panel which is appointed as arbitrator is decided by the parties. It is us who will decide. A judge who is appointed by the judicial system will decide. No, you and I will decide who will hear the dispute. If dispute is to be heard by a person which is common to us, they will they will hear. If I have a dispute with uh, with my supplier, I have a supply chain management system in place for my industry, and I have outsourced certain equipment, certain dyes or tools to be made in some other company and now there is a dispute. I cannot go to judge because judge will not understand what is a specific dye made for and how its delay will hamper my supply chain. Only a professional who is uh, typically have experience of 30 years in this field will understand. So the I will appoint, I will recommend that person, the other uh, the company will also agree, yeah, we have full faith in the person. So arbitrator is appointed solely by the whims of the party. Also, if parties agree, if both parties agree, then only an arbitral tribunal is appointed and they take the matter. Otherwise, they are not there. Most important, this is this is the one pillar of arbitration. It is inexpensive. Now, for example, sir, in Haryana, where my office is, the litigation fees, the court fees is approximately 3% of the amount in dispute. So if I have a dispute of 500 crores with government or with the BHEL or with DEL or with the, any company, so I have to deposit 3% of that amount as court fees, whereas arbitration is very inexpensive. Recently, a judgment is given by Supreme Court where it says that there was a, there was a judgment where it was mandated that 10% of the disputed amount is to be deposited with the arbitrator. Supreme Court struck it out. It said, no, nothing doing. Why otherwise arbitration is there if that much no amount is to be deposited? So arbitration is not only inexpensive, but it saves time. Most important filler. In one most, an arbitrator has to wrap up arbitration in six months, given by extension of another six months and another six months. At the most, one and a half year. Sir, as a professional company, as a, as a most important pillar of India, Indian India as a nation, that is uh, industry, we cannot let delays or disputes hamper over the uh, project. It's timely completion. If a road has to be made and if there is a dispute between NHAI and the contractor, we cannot let road to suffer. So we will refer the dispute to arbitration, get it resolved quickly and carry on the work. We cannot let it wait. So this is the most important pillar and it ensures a fair trial. Both parties are there. The dispute is in front of professionals who understand the subject matter, who will decide and it is a fair trial. 
it also arbitration is it also give freedom of parties for judicial intervention i what i mean by this is that courts normally do not intervene in the process of arbitration if any matter is an arbitration yes there is there is provision no yes uh, uh, any party can go to court for uh, interim injunction but normally courts refrain because arbitration is something which both parties have agreed in an agreement so courts refrain now one more important uh, point which uh, parties face that is uh, place of litigation for example in today's time in today's time of globalization my firm belongs to chennai and i have applied for a contract in delhi and in the contract itself is written that everything that all disputes will be settled at delhi now i'm stuck where should i file i have taken a project to be made in uttarakhand a road is to be made in uttarakhand a tunnel is to be made in uttarakhand so the cause of action has occurred in uttarakhand so will my firm will engage a lawyer in uttarakhand to decide the dispute no in arbitration we can decide both parties can decide okay we can uh, uh, settle this dispute through arbitration in vijayawada or in nagpur which is equidistant to both of them or in mumbai or in delhi we don't have to go to kedarnath to solve the dispute so the parties both can choose the place of arbitration the proceedings are private sir the litigation the legal proceedings are not private we can apply for the certified copy the courts can give it's a open court but the arbitration the proceedings are private the confidentiality is maintained there are at times i have to divulge the specifications now these specifications can go to competitor which are bad if we go through arbitration now arbitral award now a person a private person who is an arbitrator he gives an award he says okay the second party has to pay the first party uh, 150 crores how is to be enforced this award this judgment is enforced in the same way a court has given judgment similar way there is no separate way its execution is done in the same way so that means the sanctity of this award which is given by a private person called uh, arbitrator is as good as a court order now certain disadvantages are also there but advantages way the first disadvantage is it is doesn't always guarantee expedites uh, expedites resolution that means yes it is fast but still one and half year is already mentioned that one and half year is the most but still we cannot expect no i have seen i have conducted arbitration which were completed in less than 15 days yes but still one and half year is also part of the act sometime procedure is uncertain in courts the procedure which is followed is civil procedure or well defined procedure there is at most a century which has gone back uh, when this code was defined the law is very ancient plethora of judgments from all the high courts and supreme courts are there procedure is well defined whereas if we talk about this uh, arbitration this act is only 25 years old so sometime in particularly technical field the procedure is uncertain arbitrators are normally being layman layman to judicial procedure are not aware that what should be the procedure now the arbitrator the arbitration panel the arbitration tribunal as it is called they cannot punish anyone they cannot put anyone in jail they cannot give mandatory stay the stay cannot be given which are given by courts courts have powers they are close with such powers but the arbitration tribunal doesn't have such powers and it is uh, very flexible for example if arbitrator has sent a summon Uh, to other party to appear it's flexible other party may not appear they may say that we we do not uh, we do not uh, agree with this so in that case arbitrator has to give ex parte award yes ex parte award is also there now this method 
it it normally uh, if there are multiple parties for example when there is a project a huge project a construction project for example in construction project there is a designer there is architect there are a supply chain uh, a supply material providers there are engineers there is project manager and all these parties are interlinked because that is how project works one project is one one leg of project is working right now then second leg starts simultaneously or third leg will start when both of earlier will complete so when there are not many parties are there sometime arbitration becomes ineffective now what cases are not referred only certain matters or certain uh, conditions or certain scenarios are only arbitrable not every case can be it is not holy grail you know by which we will solve everything no one winding up of any company now winding of any company for example i have a private limited company and i want it to be wound because i have lot of debt on me it cannot be done by arbitration this matter will be referred to national company law tribunal which is in every state it is in chennai it is in bangalore it is in hyderabad it is in vijayawada so nclt is there and nclt appeal goes to nclt these type of cases are not referred for arbitration then such disputes in which a law is there a tribunal is defined by a law for example armed forces cases they cannot be referred to uh, arbitration we cannot decide that okay these many people can be recruited and these many people cannot be recruited or let us refer the case to arbitration that if i have a, a defective i or my vision is not correct or uh, correct no for there there is a armed forces tribunal there is a specific particular tribunal is there our national green tribunal is there which will handle pollution cases just for an example so uh, debt recovery tribunal there is a specified tribunal for recovery of debts under surface act so that type of cases cannot be referred to arbitration now proceedings related to insolvency like i earlier brought out if i have a debt on me and i want my company to be liquidated my company should go into uh, uh, insolvency now insolvency and bankruptcy code has come lot many companies particularly lot many builders in ncr opting for insolvency they they gave flats people bought the flats now they are unable to give hand over the flats to the uh, flat owners so they are taking insolvency route so these type of cases cannot be referred to arbitration probate proceedings probate proceedings cannot be and similarly the question of will and genuineness they also cannot be referred to arbitration guardianship matters succession dispute no succession is a civil dispute if i have 10 acres of land and how much my son will have or how much claim will we have that cannot be referred to arbitration similarly disputes related to immovable property these will definitely go to civil courts illegal transaction if any transaction whatever financial transaction has been done and it is illegal it cannot be referred for arbitration similarly the proceedings criminal proceeding any criminal case cannot be referred to arbitration for that because it is a offense against society society will deal with it through its police now for example an award has been given against me i don't like the award what remedies i have one i will claim that the parties were not capable the parties were wrong he should not have been party to it similarly there is no agreement i would say oh sir how how I, uh, arbitration has done we don't have any agreement for the arbitration to arbitrate there must be agreement between two parties what it should say that in case of a dispute if there is a dispute we will go to so and so person there should be an agreement it should be agreed beforehand if there is no agreement then we should go to court so if a award is given i can always say oh there was no agreement why he has done this no similarly due process there is a process there is a process there is a notice i should give notice to other party so if if the process is not followed i can always go to court and say that the award which has been given is wrong now the tribunal the tribunal is the arbitrator if arbitrator are two 
they are not odd in that case also uh, i can say that award is wrong and also also if arbitral tribunal is exceeding its jurisdiction then also i can say that this is wrong similarly the subject matter like i told you in earlier slide that what all matters could be referred for arbitration and what could not be so if something which has been referred for arbitration which it should not be then also i can say that it is wrong anything done which is against public policy can be set aside this is a standard rule fraud of corruption if there is a serious allegation against arbitrator panel about corruption or fraud then also i can go to court stating to set aside this award now come over beloved topic that how arbitration has affected engineering how it is relevant for sustainable engineering this is important because the disputes which arise in engineering are made quickly solvable the cost is reduced otherwise we know that any delay which happens in engineering process or engineering projects escalates the cost which ultimately is borne by the country which is ultimately borne by the society by us by the taxpayers when it comes to government projects so arbitration has made the projects disputes solvable quickly and less expensive first we should understand that what are the factors that contribute to a technical dispute first of all one of them is uh, there is a contract nowadays every every department works on contracts there are contracts there are sub contracts there are even sub sub contracts if the terms of the contract or the agreement are ambiguous are not clear that if they have not foreseen the circumstances technical issues or even the force major in that case there will be a dispute there is going to be a dispute that is one 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 of the cause of engineering dispute secondly very common you might have uh, uh, encountered this during your professional career the employer or i would say prime employer or one who has a contract or tender awarding authority the contractor who is going to execute or the sub contract who is going to execute part of the project they fail to understand their role if they do not understand their role so there is a misunderstanding this could be due to law due to ambiguous contract or even the faulty design this also will give rise to an engineering dispute now this this is a very uh, this is not very common thing in india but organizational behavior and culture for example if we are dealing with the mnc now this arbitration act part 2 deals with foreign companies foreign arbitration now uh, there are two major centers of foreign arbitration one is singapore second is london so if there is a organizational behavior and there is a mismatch it could lead this is the sorry to disturb you but the slide is advancing only the any sunny devil's slide only is uh, are you is it so i'm so sorry just to say i have i have oh my god i have seen i have shown lot of slides i'll go back i should have pointed out oh my god <laughs> and now is it clear i think you need not go back you are uh, quite clear it is better you start with the slide so now is it clear yeah now it is okay sir oh, you should have pointed before and i have covered most of the part <laughs> yeah, when you told in your uh, presentation like in the next slide like that then only i thought of asking it uh, so i have told <laughs> oh, thank you thank you very much so i will i will quick quickly uh, you know recap and i am to my horror this is being streamed so what is arbitration judicial process uh, arbitrator enforces his own point of view the award is binding rests on equity and justice like i told you and it is best suited for settlement of contractual rights and uh, it is a means to solve 
by referring the conflict the dispute to a third party the dispute is submitted to third party the third party is impartial and whatever decision they give is binding on both the parties involved disadvantages and advantages we will go again uh, again arbitrator is appointed by both the parties by sweet will of both the parties if both parties agree if both of them agree both parties try party agree then only a tribunal will take the matter arbitrator will take the matter it is inexpensive saves time ensures fair trial gives freedom to parties from judicial interventions court will not come in between court will not come and stay unless there is a grave reasons parties can choose the place themselves like i said that uh, a firm in chennai can have arbitration in nagpur or it can even have uh, in uh, trivandrum wherever they decide the proceedings are private confidentiality is maintained and the award is enforced in same way a decree a court order is enforced disadvantages like i said it doesn't uh, give a guarantee that the dispute will be solved in just one month sometime procedure is uncertain because uh, arbitrator is not a legally qualified person cannot give remedies like punishment imprisonment injunction no uh, sometimes it is ineffective and method sometimes sometimes uh, is cumbersome when lot of lot of multiple parties are involved and i as i told what cases cannot be referred to arbitration uh, for example any winding up of a company and dispute for there is a particular tribunal is there for example national green tribunal uh, debt recovery tribunal there are tribunals proceeding related to insolvency for example a firm wants to dissolve due to uh, incapacity to pay debts that cannot be decided by in arbitration probate proceedings question of will guardianship matters uh, who will be the guardian of a child custody matters they cannot be decided by arbitration succession that uh, how much property will be devolving on legal here cannot be decided by arbitration and disputes related to immovable property and criminal cases they cannot be decided by arbitration we have i am doing this recap this is a revision which is going and uh, what happens when i am not happy with the award uh, i can challenge it by stating that parties were uh, uh, in they were not uh, having capacity to uh, go for arbitration there is no uh, arbitration agreement between parties then also i can request court to set aside this award the process was not followed there is error a grave error on part of the arbitrator and also the tribunal is not correct there is only there are two persons or there are four persons the odd person should be there so that a final vote uh, because if there are odd a person in tribunal then only a, a voting can be done the subject matter is not capable like i said in earlier uh, and the subject matter is against public policy fraud or corruption if there is a serious allegation of fraud or corruption against arbitrator then also one can approach court for setting aside the award now we come to engineering from where i was told yeah disputes as i said that if if the contract between two parties or three parties if the terms are ambiguous they are not crystal clear nobody knows their role the role is not well defined and there are technical issues then there would be a dispute an engineering dispute if the contract awarding authority that could be a tender floating authority or the contractor who gets the tender or the subcontractor if they if they do not understand their role their obligation or if the design which is given to them to implement is faulty or is ambiguous then it will lead to an engineering dispute organizational behavior like i said in mnc's in multinational companies the way to execute a project is different than in indian companies so that could also lead to dispute and similarly if a contract is poorly drafted now that what is happening what i am seeing in legal business is that a lot many people are using standard templates to draft a contract now they are not custom made the contracts cannot be there could be not be a cut copy paste it contract suits the situations which could arise or which have arisen in uh, they, they have arisen in future 
So in those cases, if the contract is not well drafted, if there is ambiguity, then there is definitely going to be an engineering dispute. Now, what happens in engineering? In any stream of engineering, in mechanical engineering, in particularly in civil engineering, in aerospace engineering, the disputes are unique. They are not general because not many parties are involved. There is not a just like a buyer seller agreement. There are only two parties are there. It is not like that. Not many parties are involved. The data is huge. There are designs to be checked. There are the uh, tender documents to, in fact, tender document itself nowadays cross 100 pages. The data is huge and the disputes largely are violation of specifications pertaining to materials or the workmanship. Even time, even sometimes it is saying that the terms of agreement have been violated. The project has to be completed in six months. The, the contractor has taken 11 months. So this is a dispute and the contractual provisions are unique. So if the contractor understands in his way, whereas the tender awarding authority, they understand the contract in their way. So there after that, when the project is executed, when a, when a design is made, when it is materialized, it takes some different shape because the awarding authority and the contractor, they are not on the same page. Th that this is a unique thing which is not in terms of financial uh, arbitration it is not there it is not there when it comes to uh, uh, matrimonial arbitration it is not there so this is a very unique type of uh, arbitration a very unique type of dispute which comes in engineering time and delays now time and delays hamper projects this is not something which is in trademark registration. This is not something which is into other disputes, which is not into financial disputes, commercial disputes. It is not there. Time and delay doesn't matter. But it definitely hamper when it comes to engineering projects. Similarly, the maintenance and defects are unique only to engineering discipline. This is not important when it comes to medical discipline. No, it is not there. It is not there when it comes to financial things because defects and maintenance are a subset of engineering domain. Now, this is a very common. This is everywhere. Payment defaults, whatever payment has to be given, overtime disputes are there, changes in contract course because the contract was awarded in 2016. Due to delay, the cost has escalated in 2022 by two folds. So, there is a dispute because the agreement does not cover that if in case of every year, what should be the escalation in cost? We failed that. Also, in, in engineering disputes, the cases which are referred to arbitrator, arbitrator also has to decide that what should be the quantum of damages. If something has happened, if there is a dispute and there should be compensation, so how the compensation has to be reached? It cannot be done by an ordinary judge. It cannot be done because nowadays arbitrators are retired judges. They are district judges, they are high court justices, justices who act as arbitrators. But when it comes to engineering, they will fail because engineering discipline is 100% decided by professionals. For example, overtime schedule, the cost, the reason of delay. If there is a reason of delay due to breakage of line, assembly line, this may not be appreciated by a legally qualified judge, but this definitely would be understood by a maintenance engineer who has 20 years of uh, engineering uh, practice behind him. He will understand that what should be the compensation for this delay. Then technical and expert opinion. Sometimes the, the material is sent to laboratory for analysis. So this expert opinion will decide that how much damages or how much compensation an arbitrator should award to the uh, affected party. Like I just said, laboratory experiments of faulty equipment, defect in design. Now there is a design defect which has been given to contractor and contractor is unable to execute that and a dispute arises. So it would be the qualified engineering arbitrator only who will appreciate that the contractor is not liable. And also, particularly in construction disputes, there are multiple stakeholders.
delays are there inefficiencies are there uh, uh, for example inefficiency of a supervisor down below for a particular building for which a pit has been laid it can affect the complete construction the complete high rise can take a toll if for example i remember one of my friend was telling me that till the time fire uh, fire fighting pipes are not laid down and we cannot proceed forward so that was inefficiency of a subcontractor who has caused this delay now these defects can be caused due to owners because they have failed to release the funds the architect because he has not submitted the design the design contractors who have to execute the design the subcontractor now what happens everyone has their own separate agreement for example i got the award from railways to design and uh, to lay a bridge now i will be not doing it on my own i will subcontract it to many parties so with every party i will have a separate every, uh, agreement now the disputes will when when i will have a dispute with railway this will not only affect me but it will affect all the parties and with every party i have a separate resolution dispute resolution provisions so everyone has to come under one umbrella all the parties like i said would want to join as interested party in a single proceeding now for example if i am compensated the compensation should flow down to all my subcontractors now as i was discussing construction business mainly the stakes are very very high that means the amount involved is huge particularly when the government contracts are there or when lot many builders are there then the cost of projects not only are high but they accelerate exponentially with every delay for example total amount with the government which is stuck in arbitration is 70000 crore it's a huge amount and with nhai itself is 22000 crore which is stuck up in arbitration also why arbitration is important with the engineering discipline is because it involves complex point of law and procedure the decisions are governed by terms of the contract and substantial law there is no particular law for engineering discipline it is always governed by the terms of contract which only a qualified arbitrator could understand for any any judicial process for any quasi judicial process for any service matter the fairness and natural justice are the pillar now which which are adhered now this is important point the third point which i am saying the law allows arbitration to be inquisitorial what it means and adversarial now what is adversarial adversarial means that first of all in the court i will put my statement then other party will put then i will again put this thing is called as adversarial whereas arbitration allows me to find the fact it is something like board of inquiry it finds that what went wrong and who is liable and what should be the damages so that is quick and that is very fair now for example if we talk about middle east and now this arbitration is a global phenomenon it is not only in india in india it is catching up slowly but uh, it is globally accepted in middle east there are many requirements which sometimes which are not written but the compliance is mandatory if an award has to be enforceable if today i want to enforce the award which is given by arbitrator the compliance is important now who can be the arbitrator in engineering the the arbitration in engineering is very different from generic arbitration like i have told earlier why because the arbitrator in engineering must be a qualified engineer himself he should be well versed with the industry he should know for example if i belong to electronic industry i cannot give award on construction industry or in aerospace industry no i cannot i will fail there now the construction contracts the local environment local environment means the sense of labor for example the labor do not work they uh, they might go uh, on strikes in uh, eastern states but they are more than willing to work in western states of india so the local environment the arbitrator must understand 
the local laws now every state has their own uh, different laws the local laws are there there are uh, legal precedents precedents are the judgments which are given by the courts so the arbitrator must be aware that in particular dispute what has happened earlier arbitrator must have strong leadership quality he should be tax savvy and he should be available in weekdays so we cannot have an ordinary lawyer to be an arbitrator there should be specialist arbitrators particularly in the engineering fields and i feel uh, uh, through your august gathering i uh, i have found that even institution of engineers is maintaining a panel of arbitrators i saw on their website uh, but i have seen one thing that arbitration through institution of in, uh, india is not uh, uh, that much uh, that much savvy i have not seen that because i feel personally institution of engineers can be can be a platform for all the engineering arbitration in india through so our august gathering i want to pass this message that the platform could be made where all the engineering arbitration pertaining to construction aerospace government disputes all should be referred to uh, institution of engineers then the tribunal tribunal should be balanced that means if they are not tribunal can have any number of arbitrators one is mandatory but now if there are a lot of stakeholders for example architect is there design person is there finance person is there so we can have all the subject matter experts arbitration clause uh, it is important why like i said it cannot be a standard cut copy paste template it cannot be a template from where i can pick and paste no it should have detailed trigger points on disputes for example life cycle for example life cycle of project is one year if already seven months have passed and particular stage has not reached it should trigger automatically the arbitration because more it delays more i will be having a concentrated dispute at my hand the size of project the nature of project and its complexity now the, this clause this clause is to be drafted and agreed upon the parties involved now in courts in courts the oral examination of witnesses of evidence is, is not avoided it is very much part of it but in case of engineering agreements we can always put a clause that oral examination can be avoided why because it is the data it is the papers which will speak it is uh, like we say the paper is true the oral is wrong so uh, we can always have oral witness evidence examination to the bare minimum but data is huge so the contract drafting the agreement the arbitration clause must be unique to every project case studies we will have a couple of case studies now this is a case study where i was telling you that 10% clause was struck down this was icon tele limited versus punjab state water supply and sewage board uh, work was uh, given to icom and uh, uh, icom was asked to deposit 10% of the amount as a pre deposit to start the arbitration so the supreme court said that this is arbitrary it is not required otherwise uh, one could have gone to courts so this is uh, arbitration is a procedure which is inexpensive so supreme court stuck it down and said that uh, putting of 10% of amount is really not required similarly in mp road development authority case versus tulsi narayan garg it is very clearly stating that no uh, party can be arbitrator in its own case for example it is simply principle of natural justice that if at all i have to be judge in my own case that is wrong that is against principle of natural justice similarly it said that if i am the contract awarding authority and i myself become an arbitrator then this would be wrong now a uhl power company limited versus state of himachal pradesh this is a very latest uh, a judgment which has come from the supreme court in this the sole arbitrator there was a sole arbitrator which gave an award of 26 crores in favor of the power company uhl power company now what happened now this and also it was said that there would be a future interest till the time 
I mean, it was interest on interest. The award was there. The issue came that can an arbitrator award interest on interest? So yes, the Supreme Court gave the favor. It said that yes, if it is part of the contract, it can be given. So, uh, uh, considering the paucity of time, I will uh, skip the case studies. Any questions, sir? Anything, anything, whichever you come uh, come in your mind, please, please be keen to ask. Anala Kambi, sir. Yes, good evening, sir. Uh, I have uh, two questions. What right. is uh, whether an arbitrator should be registered with certain government agency? No, sir. Suppose, uh, no, not required? No. Okay. Second, is, is there any uh, document or a reference where I can see who are all the arbitrators pertaining to civil, pertaining to electrical, pertaining to mechanical like that? There is, sir. Anything sir. Is there? Uh, I, will, I will submit, sir. Lot many institutes, they conduct certificate courses, postgraduate diploma courses, even private universities conduct the courses in arbitration. For example, if you will go to uh, National Law University, Bangalore, or NLU, Delhi, or uh, Indian Law Institute, there are lot many institutes which conduct online courses. Also, also there are lot many, uh, 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 what you call forums, like Institute of Engineers is there. Similarly, there is Arbitrational Institute. They conduct courses. No, sir, they will not teach you the subject matter. Subject matter expert, you are there. You are an engineer. You have 40 years experience behind you. You know, you know all the contracts, how tenders are awarded, what are the entry cases, but how arbitration should be conducted? What is the Arbitration Act provisions about that? You can do that course, certificate course of three months, six months, one year, and also lot many forums, they request arbitrators to impanel themselves. Like, sir, for example, Arbitration Council of India, you can impanel yourself as an engineering arbitrator. They ask for it. Even I have seen that institution of engineers, Kolkata, they also maintain a panel. But I do not know how effective it would have been. But you register themselves and followed by stating that I have undergone this one year course and start arbitrating, sir. This is wonderful. Okay, thank you, sir. Then second question is, suppose two parties agree, only two parties, let us take for okay. example, they have agreed for an, uh, one single arbitrator. The mm -hmm. arbitrator also has given an award. Yes. Now, out of the two parties, one party is not uh, okay with that award. Now, what is the next step the party should do? Should they go for another arbitrator or they should go to court of law? Sir, arbitration is final. Even okay. Supreme Court does not interfere with the award if there are not glaring infirmities, which I have stated, sir. If there are no glaring, like sir, in service matter, if you might have seen what happens in government departments, if the departmental committee or if the departmental disciplinary committee has awarded a punishment, punishment of uh, negative seniority, withholding the increment or even dismissal, even Supreme Court does not interfere with it, sir, unless there is some glaring lacuna. Okay. If the procedure is not right, if the punishment shocks the conscience of the court, they do not interfere. So similarly, sir, whatever award arbitrator has given, it is full and final. Unless there are some grave reasons and then the parties can approach high court, sir. Okay. Now, arbitration award is given. Uh, there is a financial implication. The party which has to pay for the other party has not paid in time. Mm -hmm. There is a delay. Now, in such a case, what is the party which has not received the money in time should uh, take recourse? Sir, they, uh, like in normal uh, court cases, we apply for execution. Okay. So similarly, in this case also, the execution is applied. Now, in execution is done in a civil manner, sir. Even the government can attach the properties of the company or of the individual to get an auction, like the normal civil procedure. That recourse is there, sir. 
ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर एनीथिंग सर सुब्रमण्य सर सर यो माइक इज ऑफ सर सुब्रमण्य सर यो माइक इज ऑफ सर क्लिक ऑन दैट माइक बटन इट विल स्टार्ट वर्किंग Uh, he is not able to do it. Ah, uh, Subramani sir, your mic is off. No, uh, there is a small mic button. If you see on the panel, just uh, tap it once. It will start working. Okay, now I am. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you are audible, uh, sir. During the course of the project, if any delay is there, then we can refer to arbitrator. So please come again, sir. In the in the course of the project, uh, if there is any delay. Then we go to the arbitrator. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can go to arbitrator if there is a delay because, but sir, there should be triggers. Like I said, that it should be made part of the agreement. If there is a part, if we have put it a, a trigger part in the agreement, in the agreement itself, that if there is a delay of this much percent, then we will go to arbitrator. If this is previously agreed upon, we can always go, sir. Okay, if milestones are not met, also we can can yes, we go to the yes, yes, definitely, sir, definitely. But uh, then the course of the thing, the car that uh, they they should the contractor should not stop the work. The contractor, sir, this is a complete dispute mechanism devised by us. So the contract drafter, when you are drafting a contract with your subcontractor or contractor or your builder or anyone, uh, then you need to put all the trigger points. You can always say. the pendency okay. of dispute till the pendency of dispute and award by the contractor the work should not stop you can put it that sir and he he, he is bound to follow that no no work we should continue that arbitration is a separate thing am yes, right yes sir that is why arbitration is there work will always continue sir okay okay thank you so much it was a nice uh, exposure and presentation by you thank you my pleasure sir thank you Uh, sound sir, sound sir, you uh, you wanted to say something? No sir, uh, uh, it is a nice presentation. Thank you sir. Sir, I have made my uh, point like Babu has said. In case of God forbid you have to come to uh, seek any legal advice. You can always contact me, sir. I give advice free of cost. That is my dharma. I always because sometimes, like I said, one right advice can save lot of time and money. Uh, so I, it is my dharma. I have taken this legal noble profession. It is called noble profession because it grants justice. It gets access to justice to people. So if anyone, God forbid, is in need of a legal advice, please reach out to me. Uh, I will definitely. try to give you the best advice in the circumstances anything for me sir before i take the leave uh, ganesh anything brother no. so very well prepared and uh, despite of your very busy and tight schedule you could spend the valuable time with us and now i request uh, the forum uh, the other members should get to their doubts or uh, clarifications thank you ganesh uh, if uh, our friends are not having any questions i will go for uh, out of thanks anybody is having any questions sir it's all right just i want to tell it is very it is very difficult to see persons of this uh, uh, care to who wants to help people at without any cost and share, sparing his time i know what is the uh, legal advisor's time is uh, very precious uh, in fact we are gifted uh, we have to thank uh, him once again for this uh, uh, noble guidance on this law aspects thank you thanks a lot sir you have concluded uh, the thanksgiving uh, 
with the note that uh, the how precious is the lawyer's time and uh, we, he is um, offering us the um, opportunity to discuss any time for our problems with uh, uh, that uh, justice denied is uh, uh, actually delayed itself is de denied uh, like that when there is a proverb uh, we should not also be encountering with such problems so he will be always with us for guiding engineers like us and uh, on behalf of the institution of engineers and the rani, rani pet local center and the state centers uh, 100 years techno carnival um, you have uh, definitely allotted us the time and um, your um, preparation work for us to enrich our knowledge with respect to this legal and aspects of uh, arbitration and tribunals so really we are uh, um, fortunate to have you with us today and uh, on behalf of rani pet local center i thank you once again sir thank you very much um, we will meet in another occasion uh, before this uh, week itself uh, actually we are pl planning a series of lectures uh, with respect to this 100 hour uh, um, carnival so uh, thank you for this time thank you very much sir <laughs>